So we're starting out with a piece of fine silk. It's called Georgette. So it's not shiny silk. It has a sort of matte texture. And the other ingredients are the wool tops. And these have been pre-dyed. And this is silk floss. So our first layer has to be wool on, on the silk. So I'm really lucky with this piece. This hurries things up a bit because you can see it's already been dyed in various colours. So I don't have to blend the colours, which is a, it can be a fun thing to do, but for immediacy. So I've got to check now, is my wool about the same length? as my silk. Well, I've got a little bit of overhang there but that does not matter because this a whole thing will shrink quite considerably during the felting process. So I'm just teasing it out, moving a few bits of impurities to I want it approximately the same width as the silk underneath. Now my idea with this one was, it would be like a moon, a landscape with a moon. <laughs> so I tried to tease this little bit of white felt into a circle. And I'm gonna place it about there. Now it all looks really fluffy now and bulgy, but it won't remain like that because the, the process of felting uh, condenses it all. Now, I want it to look like there's some clouds across my moon. So mm. I'm using wool here. Uh, the only other fibre you can use is would be a silk thread or a fluffy cotton. So we got to go, we know we've got to work with natural, natural fibres for this process to work. So across my moon, Got some streaky clouds and now I'm going to add some of this silk floss. You can probably see it's got a beautiful glossy finish on it and it adds a really luxurious touch to your wall. So I'm trying to use the parts that tone in with those purple and bluish colours. So I'm probably best off with this bit because it's got some, it's been dyed, you know, with blended colours and it's got the bluish green and the purple. So it's perfect for this. So if you dye your own wool and silk, you can get a really good match. If you're using bought ones, well, you know, you've got to just develop your eye for the colors that work together. Okay, now wind is our enemy, but we have a strategy for that. This end here is fairly well done. So these water droplets will just weigh it down and stop it from losing its pattern. But we don't want to work this end yet because we haven't got all our layers on. Now, wool felt because it has tiny hairs, tiny little sort of barbs on this fibre shaft. Silk doesn't have that. So we need to help it by putting a very fine layer of wool back over. So we want to see this rich, shiny color of the uh, texture and color of the silk, but we do have to slightly obscure it. So we're gonna say that's enough. Silk. Any more might be overkill, and <laughs> it's blowing away. 
<laughs> All right, so now quick squirt. And now, see, I've retained a little bit of that purple wool to finally cover that silk with. So, so I'm straining it out as fine as I can because I don't want to lose the colour of my silk, but I do want to anchor it down. Especially, so now I haven't got much wool here, so the important thing is to look for areas where there's a lot of silk, like that blue patch there. And we've also got a lot of silk here. So we pull out a nice strand of that lavender wool, like a fine net. Now we're anchoring it down. Now, our moon, once again, we don't want to cover our moon too much, but on the other hand, we have to be sure that it's properly attached. silk areas have a little fine feathering of wool over them. Okay. Now you can probably see, I've, I'm lucky I have an outdoor setting here uh, under a roof, but the water can drain. So you do you need to know felting is a wet process and it will make bit of water on the floor and a, a lot of bubbles because the process of felting occurs when the tiny little hairy bits on the shaft of the wool strand crimp and tighten around one another. Now there's three factors that cause that to happen and it is a bit like when you wash your woolen jumper it can shrink. So, cause, so one of the factors is soap, and the other one is heat, and the third one is friction. So, uh, a lot of people do elect to wear gloves, and that's certainly worthwhile, especially if you've got sensitive skin. But you own, I only use very mild Lux flakes, so I haven't, and I do have sensitive skin, I've never had a reaction. But the other factor is that sometimes your water can be quite hot, so you may need your gloves. So a waterproof apron is good because, like I said, it's a wet process. And there's a few things you can use to set yourself up that are really quite easy and economical to get. Bubble wrap. You'll see how I use that. This is a pool blanket. It's more durable, but works on the same principle. So once we've got our piece laid out, we've got to add the soap. Soap is step one, warmth is step two, friction is step three. So you can see I'm just scattering the Lux flakes directly onto the surface of my wool and silk composition. And that's enough to start with because each one of those flakes will dissolve and bubble up. Now, we don't want to spoil the effect that we've gone to some effort to uh, to create. So, I need a piece as long as the scarf. Or I can always use two overlapping pieces. I think I'll go with this one. Because it's already quite soapy from a previous one. Okay, so now 
I need, so you need a little jug or pourer because now we're going to add the warmth. So that is, comes on in the form of warm water. And you've got to add enough of the warm water that you see the fluffy bits of your wool settle down. Now, one end's done, and I'm going to give it a rub. So here's the third element, the friction. So my hand is helping, but I'm being aided by the bubbles in my bubble wrap and the bubbles in my pool blanket. So there's no shame in knowing a few tricks to make your job a bit easier. All right, so that end settled down quite nicely. And we want to do this end. So same process. You need enough water to settle all the fluffy bits. Now a bit there like that moon is going to take a bit more. And it'll take a bit more rubbing too. So just be aware of that if you're doing sculpted parts or thick, you want some parts thicker, it'll take more bubbles, more heat and more time. Now most felters, as a rough guide, believe that once you've got your felt saturated and bubbly and warm, it needs at least five minutes of constant friction or agitation. Now the first part, I always just do with my hands, but there are ways to make this a bit quicker and easier. And this is another thing that you can easily buy or get from a homemaker store. Sushi mats. This one's looking a bit the worse for wear, but it has rubbed up a lot of felt. So, give it a last burst of friction. And now we can roll it up. Now, because it's a long piece, I'm going to need a few mats. But these are very inexpensive things, so it's not hard to not hard to get your equipment for felting. The probably the trickiest part is the wool, and the type of wool that you saw me use there is called wool tops. And in Australia, there are quite a number of you know people with sheep who supply it. Uh, one I've used is Virginia Wool Farms. I think that's in Annandale in Sydney. There's also a wonderful lady called Nancy with a place called Treetops. And, and both these people don't just uh, raise the sheep and shear them. They get the wool through all the stages to where you can use it like I did it today. So they dot, they they comb it, they card it, they wash it, they comb it, they card it, they dye it. They're all huge processes in themselves. And I had a lady come to a workshop once with a big bag of fleece of her pet sheep. And she was like, oh, I want to make a jumper out of Buddy, Buddy's fleece. And I was like, oh, well, we're not going to be able to do that today. <laughs> uh, so it's it's... One of those things that, you know, there's a huge long history and culture of expertise and craft knowledge behind it. But today, we're assuming that you started out with the fleece in it ready to use form. So yeah, this is the most strenuous part, really. Um, 
the reason for the towel is just to give me friction because you saw that the surface of the pool wrap is really shiny and smooth and my hands are also a little bit soapy from the whole process so it's very hard to get any friction unless you employ the aid of the towel and once again this is where I use all my old slightly worn out ones because they don't have to be anything flash now uh, your back and shoulders you can get a sore back my recommendation is to do a batch of 30 rolls so I'll do that now one two three four Okay, so that, that now I stand up. And you might think, you know, half a minute's not gonna do you any harm, but if you're doing a lot of felting, it will add up and take its toll. So straighten up, have a stretch. And then keep count of how many 30 seconds, because for each two 30 seconds, you've got your minute. And once you've done that 10 times, your felt's probably felt it. So after a few minutes of the 30 second bursts, I want to check what's happening. That's because occasionally little problems can occur and you don't want to go too far down the track that you can't undo them. So this looks good, it's fine. But one of the things that can happen is that sometimes when you're rolling it up, a piece can fold in like that and then it will stick, it will felt on. So you want to be sure that uh, everything's sitting the way you want it to. Okay, so we're already seeing some really lovely effects across that moon there. And we can see that our silk is pretty well anchored down, but there are still a couple of bits of undissolved soap. And that tells us that we have to put it back in the works and give it another few, another couple of minutes of rolling. Also adding more soap and more warm water. And this piece means something to me. It refers to a place uh, called the Patton Fens in the Kalula National Park. And there are also Patton Friends, Fens on Fraser Island or Gurry, which is its bunch on the name. So the colours in the background, the greens and the purples, that's what the that's the colours of the fens. That's what that landscape looks like. So you can see I've tried to apply a bit of friction and dissolve most of my soap flakes. And now I'm gonna re-wrap it in the sushi mat. Now what we can't, one thing you can do, I should show you this, is rub from the back. Now, I'm, this is called Nuno felting, when you felt onto a light textile, like, like that piece of silk here, this dark blue. You saw me hold that up at the start. So, when those little wool fibres contract and shrink, they suck in that fine fabric. You can also use a less expensive alternative as muslin, uh, but it has to be cotton or silk or wool. Uh, you know, a wool fabric will work as well. But that will give you a pretty heavy, heavy scarf and wool and then wool felt. Okay, so I'm rubbing the back and the idea is that these little fibres that are now starting to constrict and contract should find their way through the tiny holes in that fine silk fibre. So when this scarf is finished, we should be able to see some wool fibres coming through the back. 
Okay. It would be ideal to have one long enough for both. This will work. And the last bit will still get still get friction because being rubbed against the pool pool blanket. So here we go again with another set of 30. So I'm going to do three sets of 30 and that will be three more minutes. Now I haven't wrapped it in the towel this time because it's, you can see it's fairly a long way towards being a piece of felt now. But my hands are not going to dislodge any, you know effects that I want. All right, so I've now done my groups of 30 seconds. I can take my sushi mat off and we can have a look what we've ended up with. Now, if you, uh, you can probably see it's quite a bit shorter than it was. Like, it's probably shrunk by a third or so, and that's one of the it's one of the reasons why woolen jumpers shrink if you accidentally put them in the hot wash because of the contraction of the fibres. So now, in my blue bucket here, I've got warm water. So I'm rinsing and I'm squeezing. Now there's a last fun step in the process called fulling. And it really should be called flinging. So fulling is a process of shocking those fibres into their last final contraction and shrinkage. So a dozen good thumps on your work table should do it. And if you've done it rightly, you'll notice a change in texture. Can you see how it now looks? This is the back. Looks sort of bubbly, whereas before it looked flat. So if it looks a bit bubbly, your, your fulling has worked. It's done its final contraction. So. All that's left now is to rinse it in some cold water, hang it up to dry, and maybe wear it. Now I'm very lucky also that I have this wonderful mandarin tree, very handy to my studio. So it can join some other pieces recently completed this afternoon and dry out in the sunshine. <laughs>